It's 1994. These are the top 10 movies at the box office. Notice anything in common? You are about to embark on an extraordinary journey. It was the night before Christmas. This is the story of Stanley Ipkiss. For 15 years, Harry Tasker's been leading a double life. Every single one had a voiceover. But in 2019, none of the top 10 had a voiceover. So how did we end up in a world without movie trailer voiceovers? The first trailer didn't show up until 1913, but it was such a success that it quickly became a movie-going staple. Obviously, movie theater owners like making money from ads, and theatergoers like watching them because they're fun. At the time, movies were silent, so to tell the audience important information, they used title cards. So a trailer at the time looked a little something like this. And trailers stayed that way until the 1940s. The vehicle of narration shifted from title cards to voiceovers. But it didn't sound like a booming voice of God. It sounded more like this. Don't forget this man. He has plenty to do with the terrifying mystery that causes this glamorous woman to risk her life and reputation in a reckless experiment. A woman who, because of her consuming love for this man, gambles everything to unlock the fearful secret in his heart. Narration was intended to give a brief premise and explanation of the movie, in this case, Spellbound, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. But to our modern ears, that was a long explanation. It took them a solid 45 seconds to establish who this movie was about. Gregory Peck, this guy, what the main conflict is, Ingrid Bergman trying to figure out why Peck is scared of parallel lines, and why you should be interested, which is that this is a mystery. This style of narration was championed by Art Gilmore, an actor who was a stickler for proper enunciation. He brought a dictionary with him to every recording session. Here's one of his trailers from 1953. This is the untamed wilderness, grandeur that seems untouched by man. And into this mountain fastness comes a man in pursuit of danger. This style of movie trailer narration remained popular from the 40s to the 60s. But the whole industry changed in 1964 when the Western Gunfighters of Casa Grande was filming. The announcer that they had hired to narrate the trailer didn't show, and the crew needed something to present to MGM so they could sell advertising spots. They had to complete the trailer that day, but the announcer was nowhere to be found. So a recording engineer stepped up to give it a shot. This was the result. Across the Rio Grande to Mexico they came. Five desperate men with guns swinging. MGM loved it. The recording engineer decided to start a career as a voiceover actor. His name was Don LaFontaine. He was born in 1940 in Duluth, Minnesota to a normal suburban family. He says that his voice cracked at age 13 in the middle of a sentence, giving him his famous deep voice and worked as a recording engineer for the army band and chorus. After discharge, he began working at a recording studio in New York City, which is where he came to be on the set of Gunfighters of Casa Grande. La Fontaine became the head of Kaleidoscope Films, a movie trailer production company, before starting his own company, Don La Fontaine Associates, in 1976. And he was still voicing trailers, amassing a huge library of work. Because I love what I do, I always have. <clears throat> and I consider myself certainly the luckiest person I'd ever met. Shortly after this, he was hired by Paramount to do their trailers and was eventually promoted to vice president. But in 1981, he was sick of it and left Paramount to focus more on voiceover work. To do that, he moved to Los Angeles. La Fontaine was hitting his stride. He was recording up to 35 spots a day, chauffeured around LA in a white stretch Lincoln Town Car with the monogram DLF, topped with a little crown. This chariot tank hybrid was equipped with a wildly expensive car phone and fax machine that would print out scripts as La Fontaine was en route to each recording. La Fontaine called himself a generic VOG, voice of God, but the industry called him Thunderthroat or the king. 
The peak of the voiceover artist in the movie trailer industry was arguably in 1994. That was the last time that all top 10 films at the box office used a narrator in their trailers. It started to decline after that, dropping to nine, then hovering around six to seven for the next few years. And the ones that did use narration were blockbuster summer flicks, like Die Hard with a Vengeance in 1995. In the hands of a mastermind of terror, I want to play a game with Lieutenant McLean. Yeah, that is actually La Fontaine that you hear. And in 1996, Independence Day. And although it seems like any ordinary day, it isn't. Which, you guessed it, is also La Fontaine. For almost 10 years, trailer narrations hovered around that amount. But in 2008, tragedy struck. On Friday, August 22nd, 2008, La Fontaine was admitted to Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles with a pulmonary embolism. Ten days later, La Fontaine died on September 1st, 2008, at 67 years old. Without La Fontaine, the trailer narration industry slumped. He'd had a huge monopoly on it for some time. If you base it around the amount of contracts he signed, he is the single busiest actor in the history of the Screen Actors Guild. Without their go-to guy, Hollywood executives just didn't have trailer narrations. And that transition was eased by a shifting trends in movie marketing. Around the late 2000s and early 2010s, the highest grossing movies became ones with built-in fan bases. We're talking massive series like Harry Potter and comic book adaptations like Iron Man. People already knew who Harry Potter is or why we should care about Tony Stark. One of the reasons why maybe that's declined is uh, for the big tentpole studio movies, audiences are more familiar with the characters. So you have like Marvel movies or something, you don't need to explain who these people are. And they rely a lot on existing intellectual property, like books and stuff. They didn't have to be convinced. They already cared. A narrator wasn't necessary since a trailer didn't have to communicate those details. Plus, nowadays, trailers are viewed tons of times, and there are previews and ads all over social media, seen hundreds of times a day. When trailer narrations first became a thing, trailers were normally viewed just once inside a theater. They needed to quickly convey all those details we just talked about. And they really only had one chance to do it. With the mass amounts of marketing now, it's unneeded. With this shift in marketing tactics, movie narration didn't stand a chance without La Fontaine. The amount of narrated trailers plummeted, and now there's only a few a year, if that. Modern trailers have now turned to the actors. They use dialogue from the film, or new scripts read by the actors. Check out this trailer for the new reboot of Dune. There's something happening to me. There's something awakening in my mind. I can't control it. Timothy Chalamet's dialogue gets you right into the story. No in the world, world needed. And with a proper script, actor dialogue can hit all the same points as a voiceover. Setting the scene, letting you know why you should care, even if it's less emphasized. It's all there, just in a different format. There has always been a progression of trailer narration as technology has advanced, from title cards to long transatlantic explanations to La Fontaine's drama to actor dialogue. The industry was on the edge in 2008, and La Fontaine's death pushed it over the edge into the unknown. In, on one hand, you might think that the movie trailer as we know it is gonna disappear and get replaced with the sort of shorter form, like more social thing. And I think maybe in the marketing world, there's probably a lot of tension over that. Like, do you make your main trailer and all your effort into like the social media Instagram trailer, which is gonna be a different size and maybe a different length of time and different audience? And then do you unravel all the rest of your work from there? But I actually, I think it's probably gonna linger a little bit more in the traditional trailer format. And some evidence of that is new trailers have tons of views. Like uh, there's the Batman trailer that came out recently. Uh, you know, they, they, they sort of set records all the time with these new uh, trailers. So there's still a huge audience for it. And we might be on the cusp again soon as shorter and shorter video clips become more popular on social media. It might bring about the end of movie trailer narrations, but it also might make us innovate again. How do you feel about the difference in narration in movie trailers? 
Let us know in the comments, click subscribe, and don't forget to ring the bell for post notifications. We'll see you next time.